In this video, we are going to be discussing the topic quadratic expressions and equations. And uh, if you guys remember in the last video, we did binomial. And uh, what I did was I basically uh, singled out the concepts, the key concepts that you're tested on again and again. And I color coded them and I solved some, a handful of questions where you were tested on those concepts. So I've done the exact same thing for this topic also, and I'd like some feedback. Uh, I'd like you guys to give some feedback as to whether you like this uh, this whole style of uh, summarizing the topic or whether you'd prefer some more detailed explanation. So whatever it is, do let me know. You can reach out to me on Instagram or you can just comment uh, on this video and do check out the previous video also if you haven't. So anyway, Quadratic expressions and equations is a topic that's also part of O-level at math. So if you've done that, this shouldn't be, a, if you've done that well, of course, so this shouldn't be a problem because um, as far as this topic is concerned, the concepts, it's pretty much the same as uh, as it was in O-level at maths. Now, um, here are the key concepts that you will be tested on. One of them is completing square, okay? Uh, and then solving quadratic equations and then solving quadratic inequalities. Now, the reason why I haven't highlighted this is because this is not something that you would be tested on independently. This sort of uh, comes after discriminant, after you've applied discriminant to the curve in the x-axis or when you're applying discriminant to the curve and a straight line. And then there's sketching a quadratic curve, which again is something I haven't highlighted. Reason behind that is because this usually comes with functions. And when we're doing functions, when I make a video on functions, inshallah, then I will uh, discuss this also. And then there is something called disguised quadratics, okay, which is something we deal with in, again, O-level math and add maths. So what I've done is, uh, along with along with that, in this PDF, you'll find uh, my handwritten notes. These are basically notes from my A-level um, from my A-level math classes, okay, from the online uh, batch that I'm teaching. So I've tweaked them a little, and you can you can reach out to me on Instagram if you want a copy of this, or I'll attach a link of this, uh, a cloud link on this where you can download this from also. Anyway, so with this, you'll find some example questions, and uh, I've tried to be as elaborate as possible. And uh, where I felt like I wasn't elaborate enough, I, like I said, I've tweaked them. I, I, I've tweaked these notes a little, so where I felt I wasn't elaborate enough, I've elaborated it for you guys. So anyway, right after this, there are some past paper questions, which again, I've color coded. Okay, I've matched uh, the color with the concept. So for example, this you can see is highlighted red. Red is discriminant applied to the curve and a straight line. So I'm gonna solve these questions for you guys and I'm gonna be as elaborate as possible so that you can um, cover past paper questions and sort of learn the topic, sort of, uh, do revise it or also learn it from scratch given that you've gone through the notes first if this is if this is a topic that you're doing for the first time i'd suggest go through the notes first and uh, then watch this part of the video but if you if you want like a quick refresher or something then this this is ideal for you anyway so without wasting any more time let's get straight to it so this is a question i should mention from october november 2017 paper one paper one variant three so let's get straight to it this is question number two so it says find the set of values of a for which the curve y is equals to minus two upon x and the straight line y equals to ax plus three a meet at two distinct points so whenever you have a, the questions talking about a curve and a straight line and it's it will definitely tell you at how many points it is so the curve is going the straight line is going to meet the curve okay sometimes it's going to say it's tangent sometimes it's going to say two points sometimes it's going to say no point at all and sometimes it's just going to say meet the curve and i have a question sorted out uh for that also so that we can discuss that concept also anyway so over here it's saying meet at two points so immediately what i would like to do is i'd like to highlight this so that I know that there is something related to this that I need to watch out for. And what that is, is b square minus 4ac is greater than zero. Okay, now with that sorted out, the next thing you need to do is, if you were to find the point of intersection of a curve and a straight line, you would of course solve them simultaneously. And that's exactly what I'm going to do first. Since they're both equal to y, that means I can equate the two and start the whole uh, scraping of a, b, and c process. So here's what I mean. So you're looking at minus two upon x, is equals to ax plus 3a. Now let's cross multiply. So you're looking at minus 2 is equals to ax square plus 3ax. Now let's write this nicely such that we have the square first, the x, x square first, x first, and then the constant. So that means ax square plus 3ax. And I'm going to shift the minus 2 over to the right hand side. So we have a plus 2. And instead of writing this as 0 equals 2, you know, I can always write this as equals to 0. Okay, 
with that sorted out, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find out what A, B and C are. So A is equal to A, okay. B is equal to 3A and C is equal to 2, okay. So now it's just a matter of plugging them in and B squared minus 4AC and setting it greater than 0. So 3A whole squared minus 4 times A times 2 is greater than 0. So we're looking at 9A squared minus 8A is greater than 0. So what we're dealing with now is a quadratic inequality and let's take A common. So if I take A common, I get 9A minus 8 is greater than 0. So at this point, I always suggest my students that let's say that this is not an inequality, let's treat it like an equation. So in that case, we're looking at A is equals to 0 or, or 9A minus 8 equals to 0. So we'll solve it exactly like we would solve a regular quadratic equation. A is equals to 0 is something we're not going to solve any, I mean, we, we really can't solve it any further. We already have the value of A or A is equals to 8 upon 9. Okay, now, at this point, it's best to make a quadratic curve. So this is going to be a minimum curve because the coefficient of uh, the term with square in it, which is 9A square is positive 9. So that means we're looking at a minimum curve or a happy face, if that's what you want to call it. And the two points at which the curve is cutting the x-axis are 0 and 8 over 9. So there's no need to focus on the aesthetics so much, okay? Just make a minimum curve and make sure it's passing through 0 and 8 over 9. So this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. X is basically representing A, but it, it means the same thing, okay? Now, the part that you're interested in is greater than 0. So that means you're interested in the part of the curve that is above the x-axis. Basically, the range of values of A that give to you the part of the curve that is above the x-axis. So if I were to just highlight that for you guys, so that would be this region, okay, the one that I'm highlighting in green, and let's try and color code this also, the one that I'm highlighting in blue, okay. Now let's look at the green region. So this part of the curve starts at eight over nine and goes beyond that. So that means A is greater than eight over nine, or let's look at the blue part. This starts at zero, and the rest of it lies on the left side of zero. So that means A is less than zero. And there you go, this right here is your final answer that A is greater than eight over nine or A is less than zero. And again, uh, this is something that I have discussed in the notes previously. So if you feel like you want like a more in-depth explanation of it, do refer to the notes. And I just remembered that I have made a whole uh, playlist on quadratic equations also, but that's for AdMath. Also, as, as far as quadratic inequalities are concerned, if you wish to revise that, I'd strongly suggest you check it out. Anyway, um, let's come to another question. So here is question number two, and this you can see I've highlighted orange. So that means this is where discriminant is applied to curve and the x-axis. And uh, let's see what it says. So it says the equation of curve y equals to x squared minus six x plus k, where k is a constant. Find the set of values of k for which the whole curve lies above the x-axis. So you wanna make sure that the curve lies above the x-axis and that means you can apply the discriminant. Now, if it says lies above or below the x-axis, in that case, again, first thing that we should have done is we should have highlighted the keyword. So for me, the keyword is above the x-axis. That instantly tells me that my discriminant, which is b squared minus four ac is less than zero. You know, just like saying it has no real roots or no x-intercepts at all. So over here, we don't really have to worry about what A, B, and C are. We can just scrape them off instantly. So I have x squared minus 6x plus k uh, equals to 0. So A is equals to 1, B is equals to minus 6, and C is equals to k. So immediately, I'm going to do minus 6, the whole thing square, minus 4 times 1 times k is less than 0. So I'm looking at 36 minus 4k is less than 0, which means I'm looking at 36 is less than 4k. And if I were to write this nicely, this means that 4k is greater than 36, essentially the same thing, which basically means that k is greater than 36 upon 4, which is 9, and that is the correct answer. Okay, now, then it says, find the value of k for which the line y plus 2x equals to 7 is a tangent with the curve. So again, what exactly are you looking at? You have a curve, you have a straight line, you want to make sure that the line is tangent to the x-axis, which means that b square minus 4ac in this case is going to be equal to zero. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. We have the equation of the curve, which is x square minus 6x plus k. So let me just copy that down. And we have the equation of a straight line, which if I make y the subject in this step, that's going to make things a whole lot easier. So y is going to be equal to 7 minus 2x. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is we need to equate the two. So I'm going to do just that, 7 minus 2x 
is equals to x square minus 6x plus k. Now, I always like to keep the term in x square positive, which is why I'm going to shift everything from the left hand side over to the right hand side. So that means I'm looking at x squared minus 6x plus 2x plus k minus 7 equals to 0. Again, instead of writing 0 equals to, I've just written equals to 0 right after. It makes no difference at all, which means x squared minus 4x plus k minus 7 equals to 0. Now let's scrape off a, b, and c. So a is the coefficient of x squared, which means it's 1. b is the coefficient of x, which means it's minus 4. And c is the constant, I should probably put a comma in between, which means c is equals to k minus 7. Now the discriminant here, I should have written this uh, at the beginning, b square minus 4ac is going to be equal to 0 because of the word tangent. So tangent is a big giveaway, which means that the discriminant is going to be equal to 0. Okay, so let's do just that, minus 4, the whole thing square, minus 4 times 1, times k minus 7, equals to 0. Now let's sort this out, 16, minus 4k, we can just ignore the 1 because multiplying 4 by 1 is really not going to make any difference. And then 4, minus 4 times minus 7 is equal to plus 28 equals to 0. So 16 plus 28, let's use calculator just to be 100% sure, is equals to 44. So that means 44 minus 4k is equals to 0, which means 4k equals to 44 which leads to the conclusion that k is equals to 11, and there you go, that's the final answer. Okay, now let's look at question number one. This is highlighted blue, so that means this is dealing with the concept of completing the square. Let me just have a look at it quickly. Yep, completing the square. Now, this is something that we have been dealing with uh, since O levels, and not just O level at maths, but also in O level math. I've made a whole video on it, a detailed video on it. I would suggest you guys check it out if you haven't. But again, in this in this uh, question also, I will be I will try and be as elaborate as possible. Okay. So there are, there are two methods that I like to use to bring an equation into completed square form, and I'm going to use both of them so that you guys can choose whichever one it is that you want to use. So one is called the comparing of coefficients. So I'm going to let the left hand side be as it is, which is 3x squared minus 12x plus 7. And I'm going to expand. And you, you must have noticed that this is not this is not a usual sign. This is this is called identical to. I'm going to expand the right hand side, which means a x squared plus. So basically what I'm doing first is, so this is something I should mention. I'm setting it identical to the completed square form. Okay. And what I'll do is I will expand the right hand side, which means it's going to be x squared plus 2 bx, notice how I wrote b first and x later because you always want the variable to be after the constant. And then plus b square, close the bracket, plus c. Multiply everything inside the expression with a, so you're looking at ax square plus 2abx plus ab square plus c. And let's compare this with 3x square minus 12x plus 7. Okay, now what we're going to do is something called comparing the coefficients. So I'll pick the coefficient of x square on the left hand side, which is 3. And I'll pick the coefficient of x square on the right hand side, which is a. So that means 3 is equal to a. Or in other words, a is equal to 3. So we have the value of a. You know, you can sort of like check that box. Now we move on towards finding the value of b and c. So the coefficient of b on the left hand, on the right hand side is 2ab. And the coefficient of b on the left hand side is minus 12. So that means minus 12 is equal to 2ab. Now notice how we have the value of a. So I'm just going to replace it with 3 and b as it is. So we're looking at 6b is equal to minus 12, which means b is equal to minus 2. So that gives me the value of b. Next is the value of c. So for which we will use the constant. So constant are basically terms that have no variable with them. So a, b and c over here are constants. So we have a, b squared plus c, which means we have 3 and then minus 2 squared plus c, which is equal to 7. So minus 2 squared is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, so we're looking at 12 plus c is equals to 7, which means that c is equals to 7 minus 12, which is minus 5. Now once you have the values of a, b, and c, just put them together, put them back into a, x plus b, the whole thing squared plus c, replacing a, b, and c with the values that you found, and there you go, you have solved this uh, successfully. x minus 2, the whole thing squared, minus 5, which is the correct answer. Okay, now, the other way, the way that we are kind of used to in O levels and which is which is the following so you have 3 so you're looking at 3x square minus 12x plus 7 so I'm going to factor out 3 so that means I'm looking at x square minus 4x right I'm going to leave some space and write a plus 7 okay 
So what we're going to do is we're going to complete the square over here, which means we'll add something and we'll also subtract something. So let me just leave some more space Yeah. So I'm going to add something and what I will add basically depends on what the coefficient of X is and whatever I add, I got to make sure that I subtract that also. So we'll have a look at the coefficient of X. The coefficient of X is minus four. That means I'll be adding a two square. And if I've added something of my own, I also need to subtract it to make sure, you know, there remains a balance in the equation. So you have three, and then remember you have x square, x square minus four x plus two. So this will sort of compress into x minus two, the whole thing square. Okay, you, you're, I'll encourage you to expand x minus two, the whole thing square and see if that's what really happens. It will, you know, you don't really need to do that, but anyway. And then don't forget that you have a minus four and then we close the square bracket and don't forget that you have a plus seven waiting outside. Okay, so three is gonna get multiplied by both. So it's gonna get multiplied by X minus two, the whole thing square. So we'll just write it as it is. And three times minus four is minus 12. And then you have a plus seven also. So now you're looking at three X minus two, the whole thing square, minus five. There you go, we've gotten the same answer with uh, I would say a lot less effort, but you know, gotta be extremely, extremely careful when you're multiplying to make sure that you don't make any error. Okay. So that was completing the square and that brings me not to the end of the video. That means I have covered pretty much all the concepts. Let's see the concepts that are left. So yeah, one very important concept is of disguised quadratics. Okay, so the name itself is quite self-explanatory. It's not exactly a quadratic equation, it's sort of disguised as a quadratic equation. So over here, you can see that it says showing all necessary workings of the equation 4x minus 11, x to the power half. It could have also written x square root of x plus six equals to zero. So this is not exactly a quadratic equation. This is a disguised quadratic equation. Again, if you're an O-level ADMAT student, you would know exactly what this is, but if you're not, you know, nothing to worry about. So basically, Whenever we're solving a quadratic equation, this is how it usually looks like. You have a term with square in it, you have a term with x in it, I mean, x square, x, and then a constant, okay? Or you may not always have a uh, term with x in it, or you may not always have a term with a constant in it, but that's what it usually looks like. So over here, we have x bar one and we have x bar half. So that means there's something definitely uh, that we need to worry about. So what we're gonna do is, since the problem child over here is x to the power half, so we're gonna substitute that. So we're gonna say, let x to the power half be equal to a, okay? I would suggest not set this equal to y, okay? Just set this equal to a constant, a, b, c, you know, just to be on the safe side. So if x to the power half is basically equal to a, that means x with power one is gonna be equal to a squared. And if you're wondering why that is, allow me to explain. So if you have anything that's raised to the power of half, how do you get rid of it? You get rid of it by squaring both sides, okay? So that means you're looking at x is equals to a squared. Okay, now, so which basically means that 4x is equals to 4a square now and 11x to the power half is basically equal to 11a and then you have plus six, which is equal to zero. So now this looks like, oops, sorry, I've written it twice. This looks like something we're used to dealing with on an everyday basis. So we can solve this. Uh, six times four is 24. So factors of 24 that give you minus 11 are going to be eight and three. So 4a square minus eight a minus three a, sorry, minus eight and minus three plus six equals to zero. So I'm gonna factor out 4a which means a minus eight and then minus, wait a minute, a minus two, sorry, not a minus eight. And then minus three times a minus two, yep, so far so good, equals to zero. So that means for a minus three or a minus two equals to zero, which means a is equals to three upon four or a is equals to two. Okay, so now that you have the values of a, do not think it's the end of the question because it's not, you still have to find out what the value of x is. So remember we substituted x to be equal to a, actually it was x to the power half equals to a, but we also figured out along the way that x is equals to a square. That means x is equals to three upon four squared or x is equals to two squared. So that means x is equals to either nine upon 16 or x is equals to four, which is the correct answer. Okay, now we, let's do another question. And this is a question from October, November, 2018, paper one, variant one, which again, uh, deals with the discriminant applied to curve and a straight line. So let's read the question. So it says, a curve has equation y equals to x plus one, sorry, a line has equation, and a curve has equation y equals to x squared plus bx plus five. Find the set of values of the constant p for which the line meets the curve. Now, for meets the curve, there's something I'd like to mention. Sometimes the question will say that the curve 
um, that the line cuts the curve at two points. Sometimes it will say it's tangent, sometimes it will say it doesn't meet it at all. But whenever it says meets the curve, so meets the curve can be done two ways. It can be done by being tangent or it can be done by being, by cutting it at two distinct points, which is why whenever it says that, we say b square minus 4ac could be greater than zero or it could also be equal to zero. So we just merge the two and say it's greater than or equal to zero. After you've done that, you know exactly what you have to do. You have to first equate the two equations, scrape off a, b, and c, and apply the discriminants. So I'm gonna do just that. So you're looking at x plus one equals to x square plus bx plus five. Okay, so I've equated the two equations. They're both equal to y, so I can equate them without having to worry about anything. And then I'll shift everything over to the left-hand side. So I'm looking at x square plus bx minus x plus five minus one, which means plus four equals to zero, uh, let's write this nicely, and I'm gonna factor out x from bx minus x so that I have the coefficient of x in one place. So that's gonna be b minus one plus four equals to zero. So a is equals to one, b is equals to b minus one, and c is equals to four, okay? Now let's plug them in, and one thing I should mention is that don't confuse this b with this b, they're not the same, okay? It's just a coincidence that we have b in this equation also, okay? By that, I mean don't end up solving for the value B, although you can't, if you do that, they'll just get canceled out, but you know, something you need to watch out for. Anyway, so we're looking at B squared minus four AC is greater than or equal to zero, which means that B minus one, the whole thing square minus four times one times four is greater than or equal to zero. So that means I'm looking at B minus one, the whole thing square minus 16 is greater than or equal to zero, which basically means that I'm looking at B minus one, the whole thing square, is greater than or equal to 16. Now at this point, you can expand and then solve it, but since you have it already in completed square form, I'd encourage you to not expand it and just solve it the way it is. And for the time being, I'm gonna assume that this is not an inequality, instead it's just an equation. That means I'll have to take the square root on both sides. So I'm looking at b minus one equals to positive four, or the same b minus one equals to minus four, which means b is equals to five or the same b is equals to minus four plus one, which is minus three. Now remember, this was not an equation, this was an inequality, which we assumed to be an equation, just so that we can solve it. Now we're looking at a minimum curve, which is cutting the x-axis at five and minus three. So let's just draw a curve, freehand curve. Oops, sorry, but anyway, we're not worried about the aesthetics too much. So we're interested in this part and in this part. So this part, the one where I'm making an arrow right now, starts at five, and goes beyond five. So that means B is greater than or equal to five. And this part where I'm making these two arrows now starts at minus three and goes on the left side of minus three. So that means B is lesser than or equal to minus three. And there you go. That's your final answer. And that's the correct answer. Okay, now this is the final question that I will be solving in this video where it says the equation of a curve y equals to two x plus 12 point x and the equation of the line y plus x equals to k where k is a constant. Find the set of values for k for which the line does not meet the curve. So that instantly tells me that b square minus 4ac is going to be less than zero. All right. And the one more reason behind picking this question is because over here we'll actually learn how to solve a quadratic equation. And this has the concept which we haven't been tested on in the past few questions. So, you know, we'll get to talk about that also. Anyway, uh, did I mention that it's from October, November 2018, paper one, variant two. Okay. So first things first, I'll equate the two equations, but before I do that, you can see that uh, the equation of a line, in the equation of a line, y has not been made the subject, so we'll do that first. So as far as the equation of the curve goes, that is nice, that's the way it should be. As far as the equation of a straight line, so we'll have to make y the subject first, for which we'll move x over to the left-hand side, so we're looking at k minus x. Now we're gonna equate the two, so we're looking at k minus x equals to 2x plus 12 upon x, now you, I would suggest that you first take the LCM. Actually, that's not a suggestion. That's that's something that's absolutely necessary. That you first take the LCM and then cross multiply. So this I need to multiply with x, which means I'll multiply two x by x also. So I'm looking at two x square plus 12 equals to k minus x. Now let's cross multiply. So we're looking at kx minus x square equals to two x square plus 12. Let's write this nicely. So we're looking at, oops, sorry, two x, two x square plus x square minus kx plus 12 equals to zero. I've shifted everything on the right-hand side. So now I'm looking at three x square minus kx plus 12 equals to zero, which means a is equals to three, b is equals to minus k, and c is equals to 12. So I'm gonna plug them in the discriminant. So I'll start from here now. So b square, which means minus k squared minus four times three times 12 is less than zero. So we're looking at k square 
minus 144 is less than 0. Again, uh, which basically means that k square is less than 144. Let's say that this is an equation, so which means k square equals to 144, which means that k is equals to plus and minus 12. So we're looking at a quadratic curve, which cuts the x-axis at 12 and minus 12. And we're interested in the part of the region, in part of the curve that is below the x-axis. Why? Because it's less than zero. So this is the region that I'm interested in. And this can be obtained for as long as k is greater than minus 12 and less than 12. There you go. This is your final answer. Okay, now, in this part, it says, in the case where k is equals to 15, the curve intersects the line at points A and B. Find the coordinates of A and B. So we have what k is equals to, okay? And we need to find out the coordinates of A and B. Now, the good thing is, we've already substituted the line and the curve and reduced our equation, okay? And simplified the equation. And when we did that, this is what we ended up with. Okay, so that means there's no need to plug in what k is equals to in the original equation and then substitute them all over again because this is what you will end up with. It's just that k is going to be equal to 15. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I am going to say 3x square minus 15x because k is equals to 15 and we have minus kx. So that means it's going to be minus 15x plus 12 is equals to 0. Okay, so I'm going to solve this quadratic equation. Before I do that, you know, we can always take 3 common and that's exactly what I plan to do x squared minus 5x plus 4 is equal to 0. Let's do middle term breaking. So x squared minus 4x minus x plus 4 equals to 0. Let's factor out x. So x times x minus 4. Let's factor out 1. So again, we're looking at x minus 4. So x minus 1 times x minus 4 equals to 0. I'd strongly suggest that once you solve this, make sure that you check it in your calculator. So x is equals to 1 or x equals to 4 are your two answers. But again, do not get carried away at this point. These are just the values of x. You still need to figure out what y is equals to. So our equation where we made line the subject was y is equals to k minus x. So y, and now that we have the value of k, which is 15, so that means it's now equal to 15 minus x. So I'm going to plug in the values of x one by one. So if I plug in one, I get y is equals to 14. So one point looks like one comma 14. And if I plug in four, 15 minus four, I get y is equals to 11. So the other point looks like four comma 11. There you go. This is the final answer. So that brings me to the end of this video, folks. And again, I would suggest you guys download this document and I will try and keep updating it. And do practice. Do let me know whether this has helped you or not. And do let me know if there are any other topics you want me to do the exact same thing, which I have been doing for the past two topics. Anyway, so the, like I said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.